Shalom family and welcome to Into All Truth. I pray Yah bless you, that this be a rich word for the hearers and that it be planted in your spirit and that I may edify the Most High and the hearers in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. So today I decided to talk about some Hebrewisms I've seen in American or I guess the diaspora's culture. I'm going to add to this series, so feel free to add to it as well. Basically what it's about is things that occur to me that are clearly Hebrewisms here in the West, because the truth about the Hebrews will always be embedded in the culture. So when I went to Sukkoth, it was really the clearest, the aspects of Hebrew culture that were there. I was listening to jazz late one night when I was tired, sort of at the end of Sukkot, and the jazz was so soothing, and it just made me think about my childhood, and it always seemed to speak to something really ancient within me, and so when I grew up, we'd listen to jazz every Sunday, just before starting the week. And so when I went to Sukkot, the music and all the horns spoke to me again. And then meeting Jazz, who who wrote, uh, was inspired to write the Shema from the Shema, um, she talked to me about how she basically, essentially plays all the instruments that the Hebrews master. I think there's like seven of them. I'm not certain about that. She just learned them organically without even being shown or knowing about it. And so it really occurred to me that that's what jazz is. It's yaz. It's yaz praise. Because you take away the J that never existed in English or Hebrew, and there you have yaz. And of course, it's been perverted by Babylon and the fake people into perverse nightclub scenes and then stolen, made into... Josephine Baker dancing without a top um, or, you know, these heroin addicted musicians who are always depressed in Atlanta, Clint Eastwood movie or something, you know what I mean? But really what all the horns are about is the blowing of the shofar. And the blowing of the shofar we know is to align the sojourners with the sound of Yah's voice. When the first trumpet sound was heard from Mount Sinai. The sound of his voice is in the shofar. The most high maker of all who, if you see him, you cannot live. Who created the world with the sound of his voice, which became the law of life, the sound, the sound of his voice. This is why the shofar is blown. And so when we hear it, we hear, we're reminded of the sound of his voice and that invitation to come up the mountain and become one with Yah, become the foundation of the very kingdom of heaven, those precious stones that resonate with the sound of Yah, like all crystals do. But these are now even more precious. So this is why Miles... Davis would stand with his back to the white audiences and play his horn, the sound of the shofar to Yah, his personal tuning of his internal sound with that of our maker. And it, you know, it's always also been a, a mournful instrument to mount a song, sounds of mourning, loss, trouble, but also the bustle of the city. You know, he was trying to, or we try to tune our sound to the voice of the source. So this is the reason for the Feast of the Trumpets. This is why the shofar is blown. And this jazz music was Yah's music for Yah's people. A signpost, a sound toward home. So, um, and it's also why, you know, John Coltrane he was a saxophone player and he wrote the song A Love Supreme when he found Yeshua. Now he's, he called him Christ likely at the time, forgetting that it was truly the sound, the music of Yah that he had been playing all this time. And even in Jamaica, reggae comes from skia, 
music. Reggae is a combination of calypso, jazz, and blues. And it was originally called Skia. Now the British call it Ska, but it's not Skia. You pronounce it with a Y, like S-K-Y-A, like Skia, Skia. Ya has to be in there. And so some people say that, um, I think somebody named Clement Seymour Dodd would go skia, 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 skia to set the rhythm with music in Jamaica with the cymbals. Another, another Jamaican musician, I think it's Jay Johnson, would say that it was skia groovy. When Americans heard skia, they called it skia. So it came out in the 60s a little bit post-jazz, but again, Yah's music. And so, you know, the people on the island sounding back the sound of Yah to the people on the continent of Babylon. And even the blues refers to the sadness of the African-Americans, the African-American diaspora, the fallen queens and kings of Levitical excellence the royalty, the blue royalty that now mourned the loss of the king and the kingdom and the pain and suffering in Babylon. You know, I mentioned that, that house of the rising sun because there are so many scriptures that talk about Israel being the rising sun, the risen sun. Even, even the Muslims have a prophecy that the sun will rise from the west and return to the east. And of course, there's songs like or Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen. And this brings me to James Brown, who sings over and over again, the big payback, the big payback. He writes a song and that's all he says through the entire song. <laughs> it's like a signpost again. And he has his musicians who constantly run to try to put his robe on him and it falls off of him. And then they run and they run and they try to put it on him and he, it falls off of him again and again. As though he were rejecting his kinship, kingship? No, but because he's falling back into sin again and again and losing his kingship. I don't know. These are just my guesses. And this brings me to Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson communicated some very clear messages at the pinnacle of his career when he sang Billie Jean and danced with the white glove of Pharaoh and tucked it in and out of his coat. He demonstrates that, you know, all the Israelite men who are covering their loins, according to scripture, he has the white hand of death on his seed the sight of the hand, the sleight of hand of the enemy. He throws his hand, both of his hands out here like Yeshua on the cross. And he dances like the little, the serpent in the little prince. And he sings, Billie Jean is not my lover. Several years earlier, a tennis player named Billie Jean was, was, you know, known to be a lesbian and a very masculine looking woman. So she, like Baal or Baphomet, is almost, you know, a, a two dual sex being, hermaphroditic being. And so in Billie Jean, he keeps saying, the kid is not my son. And kid implies goat. And Billie Jean, Billy goat, implies goat. Jacob had to clothe himself in goat's hair to masquerade as Esau. Esau is the goat. So you can imagine Michael Jackson working among the so-called Jews in the entertainment industry, he may have been sending a message. Those pretending to be the sons of Yah, the children of Israel, are not. The goat, the billy goat, the kid is not my son. These people are not the sons of Yah. And then it says, hit the lyrics, some of the lyrics to Billie Jean say, as we dance on the floor in the round, well, circles always imply witchcraft. And Billie Jean is not my lover. He is not a lover. So Michael Jackson was saying he's not a lover of the goat. And these goats are not the sons of Yah. 
Michael Jackson was fascinated with the movie called The Little Prince. So the story of The Little Prince is very much the story of the Hymn of the Pearl, which is another lost book of the word, which is all about the young prince whose king and queen parents send him to obtain the Pearl of Great Price. And he has to take the Pearl of Great Price from the serpent. Price, and he leaves from his homeland where there is gold and orfer to find this pearl. And he loses himself in eating the foods of the people of the land and he forgets who he, ought, who he is and eventually he wakes up. Only because of a decree from the kingdom, from his father's land. The little prince has this afro hair, though he's depicted as being blonde, and he's a prince who's left his land to find the pearl of great price. In this story, he meets a pilot whose plane has crashed, and he's hoping the pilot can help him to return to his land if he fixes his plane in time. To me, these are like the ships of Tarshish and those who are fallen among Japheth or Japheth. But ultimately, the little prince, he meets the serpent. Ultimately, he is killed by the serpent, but he rises in the end to return to his land. And ultimately, the pilot, like the pilots of the ships of Tarshish, after he comes upon the little boy dead, after the snake has bitten him, he cries and cries, but ultimately, he hears the sound of laughter. He hears the sound of the boy's voice, of the prince's voice in the stars. His laughter covers the whole heavens and he is now among the stars. So these are some of the Hebrewisms I've found. There are so many more that I'm going to come up with, but please post them below if you see some. And thank you again for listening and for watching. I pray a lot. Yah bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine on you. Maybe he be gracious, lift the light of his countenance and give you peace.